Hello, and welcome to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee's Alumni Association's Mobile Master Chats. While we can't be with you on campus, we are happy to bring you our Mobile Master Chat series, bringing big ideas to your small screen. My name is Bonnie Fujiasco. I serve as the Special Events Manager for the Alumni Association at UWM, and we've got a great program lined up for you today, folks. Our speaker today is Dr. Joseph Walzer. He is the project director of the Encyclopedia of Milwaukee. He's also a lecturer in history and ethnic studies at UWM. He is a proud and committed Panther alum. Dr. Walzer graduated from UWM with his BA in 2005. He got his MA in 2009 and followed that up with a PhD in 2017, so three-time Panther. He first joined uh, Encyclopedia Milwaukee as a graduate research assistant back in 2013, where he would write over 30 entries for Encyclopedia Milwaukee before his graduation. He was grateful to be able to rejoin the project as its director in 2018. Joe specializes in race and ethnicity in urban history, with an emphasis on Milwaukee. He is currently revising his dissertation called Making an Old World Milwaukee, German Heritage, Nostalgia, and the Reshaping of the 20th Century City for a publication by University Press. So we will watch for that. So without further ado, Dr. Walzer, take it away. Okay, well, thank you very much, Bonnie. And to you and Kyle and Amy and everybody at the Alumni Association uh, for inviting me here to, to talk with you all today. Um, and of course, to Abby for her uh, tech wizardry, definitely made this impressively painless uh, process here. Um, and thank you all uh, who've been able to join us here today too. I'm really happy to have the opportunity to share this project that I've uh, spent a lot of time on and, and uh, have really come to love um, you know, with, with all of you here today. Um, so today I'm gonna um, uh, do a few things, I have a few things here on, um, on our agenda. First of all, I want to explain a little bit about the project, uh, what's in it, how it was built, uh, what you can find when you actually go to the website. Uh, but then I also want to take some time to highlight some of the key narratives about Milwaukee history that come out of the encyclopedia. Let's say if you really do a deep dive into it and you kind of explore it, you know, what are some of the things that you'll be able to find? Uh, and then I think we'll have some time for Q&A at the end as well. So first of all, what is the Encyclopedia of Milwaukee. Uh, well, it's your uh, first stop uh, for exploring Milwaukee history, right? So it's a digital urban history encyclopedia. So a lot like, you know, you would go to the library and go look for an encyclopedia. Uh, this is basically the same, com same concept online, right? So if you're interested in learning more about the history of the Milwaukee area, uh, if you're a researcher, a student, general public, this is a great place to start, right? To kind of go in and, and see what some of the, uh, uh, the topics are that that are available and, and to kind of uh, jump off from there to then doing some deeper dives and i'll talk more about some of the features that that we have available uh, to be able to do that as well um so we uh, we actually started building this project over 10 years ago so this is 10 years in the making uh, i was built here at uh, the university of wisconsin milwaukee in the history department uh, amanda seligman and margo anderson uh, who I believe uh, had uh, given one of these talks uh, last week. Um, uh, they launched this project in partnership uh, with a few colleagues at Marquette and assembled a um, uh, editorial board that then compiled um, a list of, of entries. And this was uh, funded with uh, tremendous support, of course, from UWM, but also the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Greater Milwaukee Foundation, and, um, and so on, and actually some, some great uh, help from private donors as well. Um, so we have, as I said, approximately 700 entries. So this is really uh, a large project, uh, thus the 10 years in the making. Um, and these 700 entries offer a comprehensive and authoritative coverage of you know, the, the key people, places, events, and themes in Milwaukee history. And authoritative is really key, uh, uh, a term there in thinking about what an encyclopedia does, right? So this is this is really uh, um, a well thought out uh, and 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 well um, vetted knowledge that, that we're presenting. 
Um, and the entries, they, they range from short specific entries on, let's say, people, places, things, but also some broad thematic entries too, to kind of thinking about uh, things like, like what is work? You know, what, what's the economy, um, workers' movements, um, politics, and, and thinking more thematically about, about some of those things as well. Um, as you can imagine, you know, a project like this, building 700 entries requires a tremendous amount of time and energy and a wide array of abilities. And so we've, we've really come to rely on a, a, a broad array of people. There have been a considerable amount of people involved in building this project. Scholarly researchers, uh, you know, experts uh, who have built their career exploring particular fields and topics in urban history and social history. Um, we also relied on uh, uh, local community experts such as John Gerda, you're probably familiar with John, um, George Wagner, Carl Baer, Yance Marty, Ruben Harpole, you know, and, and, and so on. Um, the real backbone to this project though has been students though. Um, more than half of our entries were written by graduate and undergraduate students uh, with mentoring from faculty. So it, this really became a professional development opportunity for students to be able to uh, produce meaningful pieces of, uh, of public history then that they can use to, as, as part of their portfolio to, to launch their own careers or, or continue on with their education. Uh, some of our other features that, that we're really proud of, uh, we have a media library uh, currently of over uh, 1300 paintings, photographs, postcards, and other images that's uh, browsable by, by category. Uh, you can also find them through our, our, our search feature. And similarly, we have uh, currently have about 50 maps that's gonna be expanding soon um, uh, that are also similarly explorable. Uh, we've actually launched over the last year two new resources that we're really proud of. Uh, first is our digital bibliography. Uh, that's an expansion of, we had a print edition of a, a bibliography of Milwaukee history that came out, I believe, in 2013 or 2014. Um, that at the time was the most comprehensive list that, uh, uh, that, that we could possibly come up with of, of sources on Milwaukee history to be able to then uh, offer to researchers who are interested in, in exploring this history. It was also necessary for us to build to be able to, to uh, write the entries that, that we did. Um, but since then, you know, there's a lot of other things that have come to light. Uh, other sources that, that we didn't catch the first time around or things that have come out since then that, um, that we were able to uh, kind of add this, uh, this piece, uh, this extra, extra piece of over 1800 sources that, and that'll, that'll continue to grow as new things come out um, that'll, that'll also be able to be filterable by category um, as you can kind of see here in the image. Um, and we're also developing a, a series of curricular guides uh, which we're building in collaboration with area teachers uh, to be able to offer some great resources in teaching uh, local Milwaukee history and, and the history of the region uh, to folks, uh, to students at, at levels from you know, middle school on up into college as well. Um, we also, one of, the, uh, one of the encyclopedia's key innovations was the development of, of features that allow for greater transparency and community engagement. Um, this is really important to us. We wanted to make it clear to our users, uh, researchers, students, the general public, uh, that this knowledge that we're producing, this encyclopedic knowledge didn't just come down from on high, right? It, it's the product of painstakingly thorough research, editing, and fact-checking that, that um, there were a lot of people involved in this process, a lot of hands in, in building this. And so uh, two things that we did um, to, to kind of make that clear, first of all, we added footnotes to it. And actually, if you go into an entry at the bottom, there's a little plus sign. If you click on that, it'll actually extend the, um, uh, the, the footnotes then. And you can be able to see, you know, where did this, uh, this research come from? You know, how do we know what we know? And another way that we did this was by developing the genre of understories. Uh, and these are, short essays that uh, we've attached to our entries and actually you can even find them in the, um, in the top bar as well um, that explain more about this process. And, and if there's controversies behind this, the topic, 
that need to be explored more? Or, uh, you know, what are some of the challenges to building this, this information? What's left to be, what's left to be done? What don't we know? Um, and trying to, to really kind of flesh out uh, some of the, the problems and concerns and the processes that we did to actually produce this knowledge. Um, we also understood that a public history project like this really relies heavily on community knowledge. And so uh, we added a feature for users to be able to comment on our entries as well. So if you um, uh, know of something that might have been missed or, or that might help fill out a story, uh, I encourage you to go on and, and comment and, and provide us with the knowledge that you have. Um, and also pay attention to our social media. Uh, we've, we've been really trying to uh, broadcast uh, some of the great things that we found and discovered via Facebook and Twitter uh, currently at the moment. Um, and, uh, and the comments that, that are left and the, the feedback that we end up receiving through social media and that kind of sharing has also helped us to think about uh, possible revisions or additions or, or things that, that need to be um, added or amended uh, in, our, um, in, our, in the narratives that we provide. So I'd like to switch gears a little bit here. So that, that's the project overall. Um, and that's, that's really what we've built. Um, so what can you expect when you, when you come onto the website? Like what are some of the things that, that, we, um, that we've kind of uh, fleshed out with this, with this huge project, 700 entries? Um, well, the, it really kind of, one of the, the challenges of this was defining, you know, what exactly is Milwaukee, right? That's, that's a, a key question to, this, to a project like this. And hope, hopefully one that it might not be obvious to, to go into the website with this question in mind, uh, but hopefully one that, that, that the project uh, helps to inform uh, as you do explore it. Um, I mean, Milwaukee, like probably most obviously, I mean, it's a place, right? Um, but also there's a lot of questions that go into that. Like what, what is a place? You know, what defines its boundaries? Where is it? Uh, what's it in relationship to? Um, so what defines a city in general, right? Is it its buildings? You know, I think we can, we, we have a sense, you know, kind of the common sense that we know to how to identify a city uh, when we come across it. Um, but, you know, it could also be relationships. Um, uh, political relationships, economic relationships, social relationships, and so on. Um, and we tend to think of urban as something that is distinct from rural, right? The, uh, the city versus the country. Um, but hopefully uh, one of the things that come out of that, that's come out of this project is a blurring of those lines, right? We really can't have one without the other. Um, that the urban is not urban without the rural and the rural is not rural without the urban, right? And there are distinct um, connections that, that are made there and, and Milwaukee and it's the area around it is no exception to this. Um, and we also have a lot to think about as far as a city's character, right? And Milwaukee, um, and this is some of my own research, uh, there's a lot of talk about what is the character of Milwaukee? Um, you know, what, what is that? You know, who, who gets to define that? Uh, what are the elements that are part of that? Um, and so uh, there's a few things that, that have come out of the project that, um, uh, that help kind of address some of these questions. Um, and probably the most familiar to all of us is this vision of Milwaukee as being the Bruce City, right? We're, this is everywhere. We see it in, in the heritage of, of brewing. Um, the, you know, thinking about the history of, of beer gardens, beer halls, drinking culture in general, uh, saloons, taverns, um, and, and the German word gemütlichkeit, right? And these are all things that, that they have their own entries in the encyclopedia. And in connection with one another, this, this uh, history of, of this image of uh, Milwaukee as being Brew City really kind of comes out. Uh, but also, it's not just that, it's also the resistance to that. It's not a universally uh, uh, regarded and, and well-regarded uh, concept, right? There have been movements that have tried to challenge that, including the, the temperance movement and prohibition movement um, with varying degrees of success. And then it, it's also an industry too, um, at, uh, at many different levels. Of course, there's the brewing industry, but also the service industry relies on this. 
Um, and this imagery of Milwaukee as being the Bruce City is really important to tourism. And you can go onto the uh, encyclopedia and, um, and learn more about that tourist industry and the image of, of Bruce City as being an important part of that. Um, we're also familiar with Milwaukee as being uh, the quote unquote machine shop of the world. Um, you know, heavy industry is really important to, uh, to how the city uh, is imagined, um, how it, it has run, how it, how it has uh, economically uh, developed and, and prospered. Um, but then also the absence of it and, and deindustrialization um, has, has posed some tremendous challenges to the city's economy. Um, you know, we, we're familiar with names like Alice Chalmers, Falk, Pauling Harnischweger, you know, and, and others. Um, and and these, uh, these topics and the, these places all have entries in the encyclopedia. Um, but also thinking more thematically about what is work, you know, who, who's in the workforce and the history of the city's economy um, is, is all wrapped up into this, this image of, of the city as being this machine shop of the world. And industry has done a lot to define urban space in general, right? Uh, we're pro I mean, heavy industry and, and production and manufacturing is synonymous with places like the Menominee River Valley, uh, Walker's Point, but then also places like West Dallas and Cudahy, right? That were built around industries in general. We also think of Milwaukee as being a diverse place. And, and so that suggests that there have been immigrant and migrant communities that have come and help define what the city is over time. Uh, and and uh, groups, of course, you know, we, we think more prominently about Germans, Poles, Italians, and, and other white ethnic groups, European uh, groups that have come in and have become part of, of the city, but also other migrant groups that, are, that have come in um, and have been a long uh, uh, standing uh, parts of our community uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, African-Americans have lived in, in the city since its founding. Um, and uh, uh, Latinx Milwaukee, um, uh, Asian Milwaukee, you know, the, these are all uh, parts of what helped make the city such a diverse place. Uh, but that has not come without its own challenges as well. Um, this is, uh, Milwaukee is also a very highly contested space. Uh, power and privilege, you know, have been and are still to this day unevenly experienced in the city. Um, you know, and, and we see this in the histories of labor and capital, um, thinking about, you know, you know, who gets access to, to better jobs, uh, what kind of wages they get, what kind of working conditions. Um, and so there have been uh, intense, very intense strikes, for instance, in the city's history. Uh, that have been very bitter and violent. Fight for eight hours of um, uh, of work, uh, the eight-hour workday. Uh, Alice Chalmers in the 1930s and 1940s. Um, uh, streetcar strikes. Uh, Patrick Cudahy in the 1980s. And you know, and we can uh, all of these strikes uh, have a, a huge part in uh, the the history of the city as being a contested space but then also they, they come out in the encyclopedia as well. Um, you know, and who has access to decent housing, education, employment, civil service, or civic services too. You know, these, these have been also racially defined uh, and, and these narratives uh, really play a, a huge part in the city's history. You know, the civil rights movement and its leaders, Bell Phillips, Lloyd Barbie, Father Garapi, and there are, you know, prominent organizations uh, such as the NAACP, the Urban League, um, but then also thinking more broadly about what is the civil rights movement and the, Air, the American Indian movement um, is, is a key part of this, Bosa de la Frontera, UMOS, you know, all come out of these narratives as well. And so thinking about the city as being contested space really puts urban change, you know, into a new light, right? That, that you know, uh, Develop, a city's history um, uh, is often written very much in its landscape. So, you know, buildings, the different buildings that have, that have come and gone, you know, what, what's here, what's missing, right? Missing Milwaukee is, is a uh, interesting topic that 
um, that we've explored in the encyclopedia. Um, uh, historic preservation, what's get sa what gets saved, what doesn't. Um, and thinking about uh, the politics behind that as well. Um, you know, who decides uh, what happens in urban landscapes and, and who ends up getting to, to benefit from it and who doesn't. And so, you know, and that's written in, in, uh, in the city's politics and who is in city hall, right? Gets to, to really decide, make those decisions. And that's changed considerably over time. You know, uh, Democrats, Republicans, but also we have this heritage of municipal socialism as well and, and a strong um, a conservative movement that, uh, that has really emerged in the, the, uh, in the last uh, 50, 60 years as well. But also thinking about the city as not just, you know, the, the, within its own city limits. Those city limits have a, a distinct relationship with uh, the area around it. And, and process of, uh, processes of metropolitanization are really important to the city's history. Um, it's the city itself and the, the communities that surround it are dependent on one another, right? A, there's, you know, a need for the city to expand as it grows, Right, which then brings in uh, concerns about annexation and suburbanization, but then also how those boundaries define issues of control, right? The resistance of some surrounding communities to city politics, uh, taxes, zoning, um, and then also the, the migration of the racial migration of, of certain populations and people of color has been, have been a really important part of the development of, uh, of Milwaukee and its politics. And so, uh, the Encyclopedia of Milwaukee has really had to consider, uh, as part of it, uh, the towns and villages that surround Milwaukee as part of the city's history. And so if you go onto the encyclopedia, you'll be able to uh, find entries on places like Slinger or what was once uh, uh, Schlesingerville. Um, uh, but also thinking about, you know, as part of the city's economy, agriculture and, and needing to uh, to be able to reap the resources of uh, the area around the city as being key to, you know, feeding its own population, but then also the city's industrial economy, right? Brewing wouldn't happen without access to barley and hops. Um, you know, food processing, flour milling, um, these are all very much reliant on, on the land, but also things like, uh, like the tanning industry and meatpacking industry. Right, are reliant on, on agriculture and livestock. Uh, tanning bark, for instance. Um, but then also like the history of leisure, right? And, and the economies of some of the small towns around, uh, around Milwaukee have really relied on city residents uh, who, who seek to escape the city just to hunt fish or just explore nature, right? And just get out and, and enjoy, enjoy nature. And so um, there, there have been these long histories of um, of, of rural leisure and recreation uh, and thinking more specifically about, you know, even expanding this history to quote unquote up north, right? What is up north, right? And, and how do we define that and, that and how that changes considerably depending upon who you talk to. Um, so in thinking about these relationships too, it's also really important to understand the city's history and the encyclopedia really tries to do this. Thinking about the city's history is not just a series of economic and social relationships, but also part of this larger American project of claiming space and removing uh, the original peoples that were here, right? Milwaukee would not exist uh, as it is without this history of white settler colonialism that defined the city and its area, right? Things like agriculture and, and urban development are built on um, this, this really difficult history. And Native people, you know, yes, removal, but Native people have uh, continued to be a key part of the city and its history and things uh, in its cultural institutions, the American Indian movement as being part of the city's civil rights history, um, the Indian Community School, and, and Native people have been really uh, key to, to that. Um, and also, you know, as we have come to understand these relationships of uh, uh, rural and urban and the city's reliance on the area around it, 
and its larger history, the environment has also become a key piece of how we understand the city's history and our relationship to the land, its resources, uh, the wildlife that, that sustain us um, and surround us, our, 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 uh, our co-residents, if you will. Um, and places like the Urban Ecology Center and, and other uh, community groups have been really integral to this. And we've really tried to capture those things in, um, in the encyclopedia, just to, to make sure that, that, that that's uh, a representative. And so again, you know, I'd like to emphasize the encyclopedia's uh, role as a first stop for learning about Milwaukee history, right? So, so engaging with it, it's, it's fun to poke around and, and it really, there really are some rabbit holes to get down as you click around. Um, uh, believe me, I've, I've uh, fallen down many of those rabbit holes. Um, but it's also a great jumping off point to, to then go and explore more, uh, to then uh, go to the archive and, and learn more about the things that, that the encyclopedia uh, has, has done to, uh, to, um, to highlight some, some of these stories. And hopefully it's a place for people to see a bit of themselves in the city's history. Um, that, that, the, that, the, that the history of Milwaukee is more than just um, beer and bratwurst and, um, you know, the, 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 these heritages of, of, of heavy industry that, that's been part of the past. It's still, it's still going. We're still building the, the city's history. And so hopefully that, you know, as you engage this, uh, you're finding more a bit about yourself as, as you uh, as you explore. So, well, thank you very much. Okay. Looks like we have a question here from the audience. Uh, does the Encyclopedia of Milwaukee include Milwaukee County, or is it limited to the city? Hopefully, I um, uh, hopefully I answered that in in the talk. But yes, it does consider not just uh, the Milwaukee County, but also uh, uh, histories of the, the larger area, including Waukesha, Ozaki, Washington County. Uh, that's the, the statistical area. That's the area that, that a lot of these uh, townships uh, get their own, um, their own uh, uh, entries um, and, and more specific consideration. But we also do a little bit on Racine County, Kenosha County, uh, Sheboygan County and Walworth County as well. So we're, we're really uh, thinking about uh, the city of the history or the, the history of the city uh, uh, as a much larger area. Uh, what are some of the most surprising things you've learned as you worked on the encyclopedia? Oh, okay. That's a really uh, uh, fun question. Um, and it's also a hard one to answer as I've kind of uh, been part of diving deep into this thing. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that have surprised me and I, I think that, uh, you know, I hope that I shared a lot of, of what that is um, uh, in my presentation here today. Uh, but I think that, uh, I think, I'm thinking more specifically about one of the entries that I, uh, that I wrote in thinking about the brewing industry as being, you know, such an iconic uh, uh, part of how we think of the city, and you know, there are major uh, uh, names that that we associate with that. Uh, you know, Schlitz, Pabst, Blatz, Miller. Like we know these icons. Um, however, uh, you know, it's actually more uh, there. You know, at one point there were as many as like 30 breweries operating in, in Milwaukee at one time very early on. Um, and so what comes out of it is actually there might be more of a story of, of failure attached to this, um, that, that more breweries ended up uh, uh, not succeeding and, and, and ended up getting swallowed up by these, these larger uh, ones than, uh, than actually ended up succeeding them, themselves. So... That's one of the things that surprised me. Uh, what are the plans for funding this and keeping it going long term? Well, we really definitely want to uh, make this an evergreen project, right? In other words, we're we're thinking about how to um, continue to keep the encyclopedia uh, responding to new events, 
um, the coronavirus is, is definitely one of those things we're keeping an eye on um, and, and thinking about how we might expand our public health entries and then also uh, provide more information on the history of um, uh, like the Spanish flu and other uh, uh, public health concerns. Um, so we, we definitely do want to uh, keep this, this project going and responding and, and thinking about uh, other ways that we can uh, make this a, more of a, uh, a learning and, and teaching tool uh, for, for other folks. So we're currently in a, uh, the process of submitting a grant to the National Endowment for the Humanities. Um, uh, we're also uh, seeking other uh, grant opportunities. So we're, we are uh, seeking other sources of funding to be able to, to keep this going and, um, and expanding our, our content. All right, our, let me see if I can, uh, our real new initiatives to remake Milwaukee included, such as the Milwaukee Tech Hub. Um, well, actually, so, so that's one of the, the topics that we're looking to uh, expand on in the future is, is thinking about uh, uh, revitalization efforts. And, um, and so we're gonna actually hopefully uh, uh, build an entry on that 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 might include something like the the Milwaukee Tech Hub. Uh, thank you very much for that suggestion. Adding comments to stories online is an option, but what are other ways for the public to get you info? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so you can, um, yes, of course, like you can, you can comment on the entries themselves. Uh, you can also send us uh, uh, messages via uh, Facebook or Twitter. Uh, we also have a, um, a contact us uh, portion on the website. So uh, you, you can contact us with, with information that way. Um, we are, uh, we really appreciate any and all uh, comments and um, uh, uh, questions that, that, uh, that you get to us. I mean, this is definitely helping inform uh, the direction that the encyclopedia goes from here. And like I said, we, we really envision this as being quote unquote evergreen. Uh, we wanna see this, this continue on into the future and continue to respond to, um, to, to historical inquiries and, and, and questions that, that of course, you know, scholars have, have approached, but then, you know, concerns and, and questions that, that the community has too. So thank you very much. All right, Dr. Walzer. Well, that wraps up our mobile master chat for today. We want to thank you for uh, taking the time and joining us today and sharing this awesome resource. I am really excited to get onto your website. This is going to be our evening activity. I just know we're going to be fighting over what we're going to look up next. Um, seriously, this is great stuff. We encourage all of our viewers to hit the website and uh, do some research and have some fun with this program. So thank you so much again, Dr. Walzer, for the great information and for your time today. Thank you to all of our viewers who joined us for our mobile master chat. If you're interested in finding out more about our future programming or checking out past programs, look at our website at the UWM Alumni Association and you can watch things on demand as well. So thanks again for joining us. Hope to see you next time. Have a great day. Thank you.